What's up everybody? Vega is finally upon us. And today here I'm going to be doing an unboxing video and later on I will be benchmarking this card against my GTX 1080 Founders Edition, both overclocked and non-overclocked in games and synthetic benchmarks. Now AMD has pointed out that this card is not intended for gamers, but rather content creators, prosumers. Honestly, I'm really not sure who this card is for. And I'm not sure AMD knew either. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and unbox it now. This just arrived from Newegg a couple hours ago. So, Radeon Vega Frontier Edition. Now, the biggest difference between this card and the consumer variant, when that comes out later, um, is most likely just going to be the amount of HBM2. This card has 16 gigs of VRAM. Whereas the gaming RX Vega that comes out later will only have 8 gigabytes. Now I haven't seen any benchmarks for this card yet. I've been purposely kind of blinding myself. And to be honest, I'm not expecting this card to perform very well. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is the workstation version and not the gaming card. But I'm going to game with it anyways, even though AMD says it's not for that. And there is a small chance that RX Vega may actually gain better than this one, but I don't expect it to. I expect the results I see today to be within 10% of what RX Vega actually performs at. The biggest difference is going to be the drivers when they actually come out. Now, this card features 4096 of the NCU Next Compute units, 16 gigs of HBM2. An interesting fact, though, is that... Um, this HBM2 is actually running at lower overall memory bandwidth than the Fury X. I believe it's 486 gigabytes or something like that compared to 512 for the Fury. Now this card does feature a workstation and gaming mode, so I'll be testing it in both. But before we do all that, let's go ahead and just dive in and see what's in here. First impressions, um, the box is pretty nice, very subtle, it's just black and gray. I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but it just says Radeon Vega Frontier Edition Explore and Create Pioneer. Um, yeah, not a whole lot. This box contains a workstation graphics card, instructions, adapters, and connectors. So they're being very adamant about this, that this is not a gaming card. Um, and it has a price to reflect that. Now, if you're looking at this price of $1,000 and saying it's not worth it, well, obviously, this is a, a workstation card. And I would really love to see the gaming variant come with 16 gigs of HBM2. One of my biggest problems with the Fury was that it was limited with only 8 gigs of VRAM. Um, and I think 8 gigs will be fine for now, but especially if you want to hold on to these cards for a long time and if you want to crossfire them, I'm not sure how well that will hold up. My GTX 980 Ti with 6 gigs of VRAM was already experiencing stuttering issues in some games, Rise of the Tomb Raider specifically, at um, 4K. So we'll see how it holds up. And I would expect the consumer variant of RX Vega to be a lot cheaper. I... So I'm going to assume this is going to perform about as well as a 1080, probably a little bit better. And I would expect to have a price around $500, but that's just pure speculation on RX Vega. But I'll definitely have benchmarks on this card up very shortly, probably within the coming hours if you're watching this. So inside, I don't know if you guys saw that, it's a uh, very nice foam and we have a nice little booklet in here. Uh, once again, kind of sticking with the overall theme, I do so far really like this. This looks really nice. We have a full color book uh, showing the card and a bunch of marketing nonsense that, quite frankly, doesn't really matter. If you've seen AMD's marketing, it's not the greatest. Anyways, uh, warranty information and all of that. So removing this first layer of foam. It's pretty thick, actually. It's, the card is very well packaged. I will give them that. If you saw my RX 480 unboxing, then uh, packaging is important. And you'll see why. That card was just loose. But here is the actual card itself, just sitting in there. I will say, based on the pictures I saw online, I wasn't a fan of the design. I'm not quite sure why they went with this color scheme. It might be 
to differentiate it from a gaming card, just to really drive home the fact that this is a workstation card and not a gaming card. The brushed aluminum is nice. I would prefer a different color scheme. Pretty much anything besides this. This is like a an indigo color. That that's what I would describe it as. Um, it feels like plastic. I was expecting this to be metal, but if you listen to it, that definitely sounds plastic. Uh, overall, the card is a lot lighter than the GTX 1080. Here's a close-up. And a lot of people have already stated that it's very power-hungry, requiring two four pins, and this air-cooled version has a 300-watt TDP, whereas the liquid-cooled version has a 375-watt TDP. So the GPU tack from the Fury X returns. I'm pretty happy about that. That was one of my favorite things about the Fury's design. And we get this really odd... I don't know, GameCube-like thing, that's what this reminds me of, R LED in the bottom, that, I don't really know what they're trying to go for there, and we have the Radeon in yellow, which is pretty nice, that's an LED, pretty obviously obvious to tell that, um, looking at this card in person, I don't think it looks really any better than in the pictures, this right here, um, looks like it's just a vinyl slapped on there. It looks like a workstation card. That's what I would say. This doesn't look like a gaming card. It's not fancy. It's not supposed to. And I think, like I said, AMD's just really trying to drive home the fact that this is not a gaming card. So, on the back here, we, we can see some venting in the back plate for cooling. We have the cross brace uh, for the GPU. And then we have the Vega logo here again. And right here, we actually have some dip switches that are labeled this time. On the Fury, they weren't labeled. And you can switch the LED for the GPU tack between red and blue, or you can turn it off completely. Uh, interestingly enough, though, on the Fury, you can turn it up to purple as well, because there was a separate dip switch for red and blue. Um, but that's not present on this card. On the back, you can see we have a single HDMI port and two display ports all on the bottom meaning this can be made into a single slot card again like the Fury interestingly enough the PCB is full length so it goes all the way to the end um, I don't have my GTX 1080 on me but if I were to pull it out it would probably sit right on top actually as a matter of fact let me grab that for you guys Okay, so I'm back now with the GTX 1080, and setting these two side by side, they do appear to be exactly the same length, so one right on top of the other there. The 1080 does chamfer off a little bit on the edges, definitely has more um, styling to it in my opinion, whereas the Vega card is very, very basic. I mean, the brush aluminum does look nice. I'm really not sure if this is aluminum or not. It sounds like plastic, but, and it's also a lot lighter than the 1080. The 1080 is pretty heavy, and it's notably solid. So, other key differences, the Vega has 16 pins versus 8 on the 1080. No crossfire connectors, AMD has been doing this crossfire through PCI lanes for quite some time now. And other than that, I really don't think there's anything too exciting on the card itself. It's fairly basic. There's a nice little close-up for the camera there, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't expect to keep this card very long. And I'm not quite sure if it's going to be able to beat my 1080. My 1080 was overclocked at 21.25 MHz on air. And I will be testing very close to an AC unit in an air-conditioned air room, so that's really going to provide kind of the optimal testing scenario for these two cards. But uh, I guess I'll just set these aside for now. Um, what else do we have in here? So we have a DVI to DisplayPort connector. That's pretty nice. I might actually use that. I'm not going to use that. Then there's more foam that just held in the card. And yeah, that's that's it. Um, 
Honestly, the packaging is pretty nice. Maybe not quite as nice as Nvidia's presentation with their 10 series cards, but overall, I'm certainly not upset. It's very well packaged, looks nice. Uh, doesn't really leave a whole lot more to be desired. Nvidia went above and beyond with theirs, but I think their design has always been better, personally. But, uh, let's get this card in, let's start benchmarking.